Hood of cheaters. The same gentleman comes to your home. Fred. I can't look. It's all right. That's enough. I get the gist. I know. What are you doing? Oh my gosh. From cheaters surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. It's just like he's just trying to keep a big secret from me. I just can't take the lies. I just can't go on anymore. I need to know the truth. I don't like being the one that has to show you this. I have the excuses. This is something that I've got to know. They're together right now. There they are. Let's go. What's up, homie? Who are you, homie? Stop! How did you do this to me? Stop! Ow! Stop! Mitch, stop! You better get right with God. I love you. I'm so sorry. Real reality television has brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on Cheaters. Hello, I'm Joey Greco. Thank you for tuning in to Cheaters. Please meet Fred Epstein a discerning gentleman questioning his girlfriend's diminishing adoration. Electing to examine her daily routine, Fred brings in cheaters for some specialized assistance. Fred Epstein, age 42, a contractor worried that his girlfriend is becoming distracted from their once blissful relationship. I had a seven year relationship with a woman that I'd known since high school. And it ended somewhat tragically. It was a very sad ending um, because neither one of us wanted to end, but it had to end. It just didn't work anymore. And after that, because it had been such a great and intense relationship, I sort of built a wall around me, sort of became callous. And when nice girls approached me, I, I wouldn't return it. I wouldn't give in to it. And I would pretty much given up to the fact that I would be alone forever. I didn't think it was ever going to happen to me again. And then I met I mean, I saw it. It happened again. I felt that um, pitter-patter in my heart it made me see the beauty of the world around me. And it was a real eye-opener to love again and to feel things I hadn't felt in a while. There seems to be a, a, a little uh, angry reaction to some of the things that I do that I normally do that normally she wouldn't get angry with. The, the dishes after I've eaten aren't cleaned up, which usually she does. I mean, I realize I could clean them up myself, but usually she does it and I'm having to do it more, and I think it was one of those things that she did to please me, and I don't feel like she wants to do them to please me anymore. Now it's become a chore to her, like I'm work. It might mean that I'm taking it too far with her. It, it could be a, a number of reasons. It could be my own fault, but I feel as though she's reacting to me in a way that says, hmm, let me, let me rethink this relationship. And I think that if I were to be hit with the truth, and the truth was there, I think I may not shed tears, but the first thing I would do is cry, and then I'd react. And my reaction, I don't know. I, I can't say. Um, anger, fear, distrust, hate, um, all of them. But first, first inside I'd cry. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Suspect's identity withheld, age 36. A homemaker losing interest in her longtime relationship. Investigation day two. Cheaters tacticians examine preliminary data in the case while field agents keep a close watch on the residence Fred shares with the suspect. Informed of Fred's late work schedule, Cheaters crews remain on high alert. Following hours of inactivity, the suspect, whose identity is withheld, decides to seek out some nighttime entertainment. Departing her residence, the suspect walks through the parking lot in a somewhat agitated manner, accompanied by an unidentified gentleman who helps her into his vehicle. The pair proceeds to a fast food restaurant several miles away. Seeming a bit more relaxed, the suspect and her companion walk inside and order some burgers before picking out a cozy booth apart from the other patrons. Having finished their meals, the couple exits the restaurant and Cheater's investigators follow them back to the apartment that Fred shares with the suspect. 
The male companion touches the suspect in a rather suggestive manner as she escorts him inside. Many hours later, the suspect's gentleman friend hurriedly leaves the residence. Investigation day five. Anticipating more activity from the suspect this evening, Cheater's agents station themselves outside her residence and prepare for her companion's probable arrival. After a short wait, the male companion, who is now identified as Mark Morris, enters the scene and scurries up to her door. Unknown to the suspect, Fred installed hidden cameras in the apartment two days earlier while the suspect was out running errands. Companion Morris seems right at home as the two get cozy on Fred's couch. Cheater's agents look on in disbelief. Getting hot and heavy, the two move upstairs to consummate their budding relationship. Having time to conclude their activities, companion Morris anxiously departs his lover's home after the suspect receives a phone call from Fred informing her of his unanticipated early arrival. Investigation day eight. Cheater's agents positioned outside of the suspect's residence receive notice once again of companion Morris's arrival. Companion Morris wastes no time. He hurries through the parking lot and straight to the suspect's apartment. The suspect peers through the window and then rushes to greet her not-so-secret lover. One thing leads to another, and the couple's lust quickly takes over. The suspect seems to delight in treacherous behavior, as heard in this recorded phone call with Fred. Cheater's agents end the investigation and prepare an intervention with Fred. Coming up, the confrontation. With the copious footage documenting Stephanie's deception, Cheaters approaches Fred to notify him of the affair. Prepared for the worst, Fred settles his bereft emotions as the crucial moment draws near. Fred, thanks for being here tonight. You're welcome. I know when you contacted the show, it was with apprehension because you were uncertain of what was going on in your relationship. Fred, the reason we're here this evening is because our detectives do have some information that you've asked us to gather. I want you to know that some of this information does have the potential to be very disturbing. This is a very difficult thing, I know. What would you like to do? I would like to know the truth. It's eating me up inside. Not knowing, I think, is a much worse pain than truth, however painful. Fred, on this evening, this gentleman arrived at your residence, picked up. They got in the car. They were followed to a restaurant. After dining, Fred, they get back in the car, and they head back to your home. My house? Where they go inside and spend quite some time there. It hurts. It really, really hurts. You don't know how it hurts. Oh. You know, on, on, on another night, Fred, the same gentleman is in your house. They sit down. Oh, gosh, no. But before long, that. they get bored with the activities. Jeez. Oh, and this is Fred. I can't look. It's all right. That's enough. I get the gist. I know. Fred, we do know where she is tonight. And she's not at home waiting. Oh. She's with this gentleman again. Oh. They're together right now. Right now. We've done one thing that you've asked us to do, and that's find out the truth, Fred. But the other thing that we can do for you is provide you with an opportunity to confront Oh, yourself. yeah. Oh, yeah. You ready to go? All right, come with me. Yeah, what do you got? Yeah. Let me know if you get anything else. 
Yeah, I'll just tell him right now, and we're headed over there right now. They just they just followed him to a bar. They're in the car, and we're headed over there, and then we're only a couple minutes up. Are you okay? Okay, we're not gonna lose him, don't worry. We have three guys that are there on location. Yeah, okay, they're in the car, but they're not doing anything. They haven't gone anywhere. Okay, I gotcha, I see you. All the way down. Okay, all the way down. Look for a blue tile right there, right there on the left. Oh my God. I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Oh. What are you doing? Uh, oh my God. What are you doing? Oh my gosh. Oh God, no. How do you explain this? I can't. Come here. I, I'll... <sighs> Coming up, the conclusion. Explain this. I'm sorry. You didn't give me everything, evidently. TV camera for. You guys can leave. Huh? What do I do? I don't know. I know you're not doing something. Yeah, did you get that? Oh, jeez. Oh. What's up, man? Get away from me. What's up? Get away from me. You all right, honey? Yeah. Fred. You ain't doing it. Man, I'm taking this chick home for a long time. She's mine. What do you want to do? Where are you going? What, what do you expect me to do? Not call me. Not treat me like. I'm sorry. You going with me for not? That's what you want? That's what you like? That's what way you want to be treated? I'm sorry. Thought you had something going I'm on. Sorry. That? He's Fred. a bum. You know he's in trouble with law. He's dumb. Problem is, I still love him. Why you have to go around behind his back? I mean, it. If you're as tough as you say you are, you don't need to go around behind anyone's back, do you? It has nothing to do with toughness, no. He just didn't take care of his old lady, so I am. She's been calling me for, uh, I don't get into time frames or nothing, but we got something going, obviously, more than they got. <laughs> Dumpster, okay. Trash. Dumpster queen. Trash. I should have known better than mess with trash. Come on. No. I, I, I believe in you. Why didn't you tell me to the card before? I, I believed I in trash. you. I believed okay. in you. I believed in Come you. Come on. My goal is to make someone happy. That's what I do to make her happy. It works. Uh huh. So respect doesn't count. It's not included if you in your respect, relationship. You get it from me. And that's the way we're gonna leave it. I don't know. What do you want? What do you want? Are you willing to do what I want? I want yesterday. Because today yesterday. sucks. Yesterday's gone. Okay. Unless you're willing to come to a compromise, I don't know what to say. I've compromised my. No. I've it. compromised no, my life. If you compromised your, I wouldn't be in this predicament. We caught you out here in the car with another man, other than the person that you're living with for six years. Now, call me crazy, but is that his fault? No. OK, you're making it his fault. So you going to take care of him? <laughs> no, I just do. Yeah, I mean, Get him away. I don't. You had to tell him. She ain't left with you yet. She ain't going to leave with you, man. You. Huh? She ain't left with you. Not. I don't know you. I don't want to know you. You ain't no stud. You ain't nobody. Don't let him get into it. Don't worry. Walk on. You think you're so hot? You think you're so great? You ain't. Man. Hmm. Spend your paychecks, you know? I'm so sorry. So sorry. Bar's still open? We don't need him. You don't need him. You don't Bart's need him. Bar's gone. Just go on, Mark. Say goodbye. Say good riddance. I'm so sorry, OK? We'll talk about it. OK. We'll see what happens. OK. Thank you. Can you even drive? Can you even drive? My heart is broken, but. OK. I can't tell you how much that means to me. We'll, we'll get help. We'll, we'll, if you mean it, if you really think it's worth salvaging, I mean, I've been telling him all night, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And right now, I don't know what to do. I just know I feel. Just give me another chance. And I have been, um, you okay. look pretty tonight. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just sorry you look pretty for him and not me. Okay. We'll see what happens. So we can talk about it? Yeah, we can talk about it. Okay. I wish you could have seen 
how upset he was when he found out what was going on. I do love him. Okay. So you were angry at him for yes. a reason. In relationships. But they're important. You, they they signify are physical, emotional. Signify how important you are to me. I mean, how many okay, other yeah. women Listen do I this provide that? What's he doing? What's happening? Get down. Would he stay down? What was that? Oh, somebody's funny. Very funny. Okay. You guys are all right. You guys yeah. are all right. Yes. If both of you are willing and interested, we'll provide counseling for you. I'm willing. I'm interested. I'm sorry I stopped paying attention to you. I'm sorry Small I was so pushy and, <laughs> and needed uh, <laughs> more than <laughs> what I was letting you know. Okay? Okay. Let's get help. Thank you. Thank you very much. Following the confrontation, Fred attempts to understand his girlfriend's ruthless behavior. At the conclusion of this presentation, Cheaters discloses his choices for the months to come. But first, Cheaters presents Whitney Stevens. Whitney attempts to explain the desperation she displayed when confronting her two-timing boyfriend. Whitney Stevens, age 22. Whitney discloses how her naivete regarding men constantly has her falling for Mr. Wrong was mad I was hurt I didn't understand why this was happening you know and honesty plays you know a big part you know in a relationship and I just felt like he just needed to be honest with me and we wouldn't have been going through what we were going through what the hell are you doing what, are you doing? what is going on I thought she was supposed to be with your friends this weekend it was man it's smart it's oh. That's just a friend, for real. I'm telling just, you. Just friend. Just yeah. a friend. Yeah. Do all your friends have keys to your house? When he was grabbing on me, it was more out of frustration than him actually trying to get physical with me. He, you know, he didn't want, he wanted to talk to me by himself. And he couldn't. So he was just a little frustrated. Man, let me talk well, to hang on. No, you ain't getting. No, hang on. Me? Hang on, bro. No, uh, -uh. Ooh, no, man. baby. Look. Say that. Yeah. You want to see it? You want to see it? Okay. Yeah. You better get your security. Grab me. Yeah, well, I don't need security. Yeah, you do. I need security. You know, I just got had it. My feelings were really hurt at first, but I mean, just to get everything out out in the open, that made me feel a whole lot better, and. I mean, like, I couldn't believe that that's what he was really doing behind my back after all this, you know, all the years and the effort, the time that I put into the relationships. But, you know, what's in the dark, you know, will come to light. Fred Epstein wants to give the suspect a second chance, but only if she adheres to several conditions. First and foremost, Fred insists the couple seek counseling to open up the lines of communication that have slowly eroded over time. However, Fred places the heavy burden of rebuilding his trust squarely upon the suspect. Knowing that this will take some time and that it may very well fail, Fred sees no other way to fully ensure his future with the suspect. The suspect feels fortunate that Fred has it in his heart to forgive, but understands that Fred never forgets. Nonetheless, the suspect says this is a unique opportunity to prove her dedication to Fred. According to the suspect, Fred has a heart of gold, and she is fully confident that their love will overcome all of the obstacles life has to offer. Mark Morris has no doubt in his mind that the suspect will contact him in the near future. Still, Mr. Morris admits the suspect will probably patch things up with Fred since she hates to work and wants to continue the free ride. In a few weeks, things will get back to normal, Mr. Morris comments. Fred will be off at work, and I'll be back to a lonely woman. 